Hi, this is Andy Turner, the Education Technologist at Illinois College. Today I wanted to show how you can use a database to show information, store information, and edit information to use the input processing output paradigm. I do have some JavaScript object notation that we can look at today. And in this case we have a series of files that you can look at on the command line where you can look at HTML in the command line using a command called curl and you can see that when you do a CURL and a website that I've created that actually goes to um, the web server and returns the text as HTML so that's great uh, the uh, web page that actually gets returned if you go to that in a browser looks just like this so you do have the possibility of returning that HTML in a browser which formats the the text and image uh, commands so to speak in a certain way now if we want to look at go ahead and get rid of that old data. If we want to look at data that resides on a database in terms of object notation, but what if that data could be looked at in a friendlier way? So a web browser using the model view controller design paradigm says that the data should live in the model in the MVC the controller is usually Java or some server-side language and we've looked at the Java file uh, that creates JavaScript. Uh, there are a couple of libraries out there, one of which is simple JSON and in Java you could create a JSON document where the Java program goes out to the database. So you'd have a database such as a, a MySQL database and then that would be uh, queried by a Java file and that would be the MySQL driver and then that would yield a JSON document and then that JSON document would be consumed by HTML so you could see it so HTML would be the view the JSON and the JavaScript that provides the HTML would be the controller and then the database itself and its representation would be the model for the full model view controller stack. Now there's a representational state transfer paradigm where it says that the URL is how you get to the data where it would be domain.com slash method name slash parameter name so you would go to domain.com slash uh, git slash the uh, the name of ID number one two three four five and then that might return Andy for example um, so that is one way where you would go to a browser like a web application on your iPhone and it would give you back maybe your task list or it would give you back your uh, stock quotes something along that line maybe test scores which is what I'm working with here for students now the data that lives in a database is in a schemaless format so for every key you do have a value now in this case it might be ID number colon and then my ID number it might be password field and then you have your password there so a key and a value pair in other words a list or a dictionary or a hash those are all data structures uh, that you can use primary uh, data structures that you can use to store data in the model a list a linked list uh, an array a queue, those are all data structures that you can develop out of a database. 
So the database that I've chosen uh, to operate with, um, I've, I've used MySQL in the past and I've shown how to connect MySQL um, and how to operate on that database from PHP. But in this case, sticking with JavaScript, you can use uh, a database called MongoDB. And here I have Mongo running and I have a database uh, called test. Now if I want to show what databases I have here, it returns test. Now this is in the Mongo shell and I'm running this on an Ubuntu server. So I do have a database called test. Now what if I want to show some of the data in that database? Just very quick, notice I have placement2.json placement underscore json2 dot json rather that placement underscore json2 is actually a collection in this test database so if I want to find all the things in that database I can say db dot placement underscore json2 dot find and it returns a bunch of data and I can get more and more so I'll go ahead and quit out of that go back into Mongo scroll out of that data now if I want to re return data that's more uh, user friendly then I could say db dot placement json2 dot find dot pretty and then I get an array of objects that's more human readable where I have a list of objects or an array of objects each object has a key and a value for different properties so ID number is this first name is that uh, test score is this now every key can have multiple values as well so you could have an array of values for every key if you like so you can compose that in a very expressive way here in the Mongo shell you can also edit that same database so if I wanted to edit that same database what I could do is create a new object in that database or a new function in a JavaScript file that would construct a new object in that database like so I could say function G and then I could edit G now here in Vim it's an integrated command line editor can hit escape and I to insert and then say print what's up G and then hit escape colon W to write that escape colon Q bang to get out and then once I execute G it shows the result of executing that function now if I want to actually show the text of that function I would just type G and hit enter and now I have the literal string of text that's inside that function so that's the difference between a literal string of text and the executable text The cool thing about JavaScript is that the contents of a function and the execution or the result of executing that function are interchangeable so that you can have functions as data. So the data is containing the function that could execute other functions now that data containing a function which
produces data containing another function and so on and so forth that's a very composable way to create uh, objects or uh, collections of objects a network or a graph structure uh, based on binary trees or queues or linked lists, stacks, arrays, whatever data structure fits your needs that schemaless uh, property of MongoDB does make for a very flexible, scalable, uh, elastic uh, model for your application. If I want to create a new object O and set it to empty, it shows me O, and then if I want to edit O, I'll hit escape I to begin editing O, and now I can say I have a key colon value. I'll escape colon W right, escape colon Q, bang, to get out. And then if I hit O, now I have the contents of O, which is a key and a value. Now, I could have put the literal string of text of G here as the value of O and then called O.key which would have printed the execution of G. Imagine instead of printing a string of text printing the string of text of another function or imagine further executing that function inside this function which lives in a value called G which is the value of this key so you can really stack things inside of things using the encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism techniques that we all know and love in object-oriented programming, all in JavaScript. And uh, just the last thing, there is a fantastic new book out called uh, Data Structures and, all, and Algorithms with JavaScript. And that is um, by Michael McMillan, McMillian, uh, published uh, just this month here in March 2014 on O'Reilly definitely check that out and hopefully this has helped I hope that you'll uh, want to at least be interested in using MongoDB as your data source or your model if you're currently looking at MySQL or SQL as a traditional structured uh, relational database this is one way to get easy access to that data where you can use object-oriented uh, techniques in JavaScript to provide a very flexible HTML view which is uh, deliverable. It's, it's very available in this day and age. Thanks a lot for your time and have a great day. Mm -hmm.